is up, guys? Happy Friday. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I made a post maybe around like 5.30, uh, 5.45-ish that I said I'm going to go live and it's going to be about, you know, injuries and muscle weaknesses um, and, you know, what muscles are, for most people, pretty weak. Um, and what we can do to, you know, what exercise you guys can do pretty much every day or very often um, to help get this, you know, fixed. You know, the, you know, and some of you guys might think, well, why don't we do this in the gym? You know, and here's why. You know, and not, nothing against you guys, but people want variety, okay? You know, you guys would not be happy if every single day we're doing the same exercise. Okay, so even though I think you know we should all be doing you know let's say bridges, okay, that's simple exercise, it works the glutes, I really like it. I think all of us could benefit from doing you know put a band on our legs and do a two or three minute bridge every single day. Some of you guys may not like that, and so you know to to make no no to keep you guys happy to make sure that you guys aren't getting bored with the workouts. That's why we tend not to throw those things in. Okay, we try to work our, work our way around it by doing different exercises that work with similar muscles, you know. Um, but again, you guys can still benefit from doing these exercises every day. All right. So, first off, let's just, before we get into exercises, let's talk about what's weak and why it's weak. Okay. So again, this is a generalization, and, the, and it's because a lot of us are very similar in terms of lifestyle. Okay. A lot of us sit a lot, whether it's at work, at home, in the car, okay? And what does that mean? A lot of us are like this, hunched over, heads come forward, okay? That's very, very common. Same thing, you know, this, this, this might remind you of the pelvis video I did a couple days ago where sitting a lot makes your hips tight and glutes weak, okay? So, there, and there's a couple other muscles, and I'll talk about that more in detail in a second. Um, but, um, you know, due to our lifestyle, a lot of muscles are chronically weak, okay? So you can think of, there's a couple words you can, that are maybe not synonymous, but they are very, very similar. And it is weak, lengthened, okay, or underactive, all right? So weak is pretty, you know, you know, straightforward. It's not strong, okay? It's not a strong muscle, okay? Lengthened is kind of a fancy word for stretched, okay? So let's say, okay, I have a rubber band here, okay? Let's say in a healthy, balanced, you know, posturally correct individual, you know, a muscle is like this, okay? Now, let's say due to not working out, which weakens the muscle, um, and, you know, certain lifestyle things like sitting, you know, stuff like that, muscle gets lengthened, okay? Well, it's not supposed to be like that, so something else is going to happen, okay? And the thing you have to understand, the body is a machine, it's a chain, okay? If there's dysfunction in one muscle, or one joint, or one area, odds are it is going to affect another area, okay? So, you know, muscles have opposing muscles, okay? So if one muscle does this, the other muscle does something else. So, if I have one muscle that's severely lengthened, okay, what's the opposite of lengthening? Shortening, okay? So, if I have this opposing muscle, and this muscle is really lengthened, then that opposing muscle is going to do the opposite and shorten, okay? We don't want either of those. We don't want to be too lengthened. We don't want to be too short. We want to be perfectly balanced. All right. So you might hear me say, "Oh, lengthen, stretch, uh, you know, weak, underactive." Very, very similar term. And underactive just means it's not firing. Okay. Whether you're not using it enough, or your nervous system doesn't know how to fire. You know, you might. We don't say it too often. It's more of a bodybuilder term, but mind to muscle connection. Okay. What does that mean? That means that I'm doing bicep curls. As I curl. I'm telling myself, squeeze the biceps, squeeze the biceps. I'm activating it. I'm, and it's a real thing. If, you, if you're doing an exercise and you really focus on squeeze, 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 it is going to help activate that muscle, okay? So if you're someone that hasn't worked out in a while or just hasn't really practiced the mind-to-muscle connection thing, you may have a hard time firing certain muscles, okay? So for example, for me, it's very easy for me to activate my quads and my glutes, okay? It's very easy for me to squeeze them, whether I'm just like like standing and want to squeeze them, or if I'm doing an exercise, okay? If I'm squatting or deadlifting, it's very easy for me to squeeze, okay? Uh, muscle that I have a hard time squeezing is my hamstrings, okay? Without, like, s s without bending my knee, okay? So for example, you know, when I'm standing, I have a hard time squeezing my hamstrings. When I do, this, 
drive my heel to my butt, it's a lot easier for me to squeeze it, okay? So again, we know, you know, we, that's what kind of underactive means, the inability to really focus in and say, I want you to turn on and work, okay? So why is this an issue? Why are having lengthened or weak or underactive muscles an issue, okay? Like I already said before, there's these relationships between muscles, opposing muscles, okay? So again, this is gonna be just like the pelvis, this part right here is gonna be a lot like the pelvis video that I made a couple days ago, okay? So, TFL, front of your hip, okay, this hip flexor here, and the quad are all fairly tight, okay? And the glutes are fairly weak. They are opposing muscles, all right? So, you know, uh, Right now, okay, if I, let's say I do, if I sit for hours upon hours and I really tighten my TFL, okay, what that is going to do is my TFL, that tightness, is going to help tilt my uh, pelvis forward, okay? Top of my pelvis comes down, back of my pelvis comes up, okay? What that's going to do is you're not going to feel it, but you're lengthening your glutes, you're stretching out your glutes, okay? And long, you know, not a stretch for 30 seconds, but like throughout the day, throughout your life, the more you pull and stretch that out, you're going to make it weaker, okay? And so to counteract that, you know, and, and so now I'm here, okay? Now I try to deadlift, I try to squat, I'm going to hurt my lower back, okay? So if I had appropriately strong muscles, if I had a, I had a strong glute that would, you know, counteract that tilt and I could strain out a little bit, when I go to deadlift or go to squat, I'm not going to have that back pain, okay? So it's very important to be mindful of these relationships that opposing muscles have because, um, like I said, you know, it might mess with your posture or your movement and that could cause injury, okay? Another one is knees caving in when we squat. You guys hear all of us say it, don't cave your knees in, okay? And, and I, I said it in a video a couple weeks ago, if you guys don't believe me, what, like it's bad for your knees to cave in, go on YouTube and, you, you know, basketball, football, soccer, whatever, look at videos of people, of athletes tearing their ACLs. I cannot watch it. It is disgusting. It kills me. But what happens is their knee caves in and snap. It, it, it's painful like crazy. Ask Danny. Dan, I think it's three times Danny has torn his ACL. So ask him. It is not a good time and you're gonna be out of the commission for a long time, okay? But why do our knees cave in? Now, there's not a super simple answer, okay? There's a lot of factors, okay? Um, one factor is your glutes and abductors, so your butt and then like the side of your hip are weak, okay? And then your adductors, which is your groin, okay, is really tight, all right? And so, this is weak, so it's not gonna pull, like it's not gonna externally rotate my hip, this, is really tight, so it's pulling this side in, so I go to squat, I get one of these, okay? And again, there's another, another factor is that your arch collapsing on your foot, okay? If you, don't, if you have a high arch, but your arch collapsed and you don't have that strength, your knee may also cave in, but again, that's a different story. But that is another example of certain weaknesses and certain tightnesses causing an issue. So now, if I go to squat, I do this, I'm gonna get hurt, you know? Whether I end up tearing or wearing on my ACL, or if you think about it, if if here's the knee, if it is meant to do this, okay, this, you know, right now I'm standing up, and now I go down and squat, okay. Well, now if my knees caved in and I'm like this, well, the knee wasn't made to do that, okay. You're gonna wear on your knee in a in a bad way because your, your, your joint wasn't meant for that kind of wear. It was meant for being straight on, going back and forth here, and not going back and forth here, okay? So it is super important to address these weaknesses to make sure we're in proper alignment, okay? Because the name of the game for any trainer, any fitness person, is to make sure people don't get hurt, okay? You know what, you know, how good of a trainer are you if everyone on the face of the earth is doing exercises wrong and getting hurt, okay? So, if we strengthen these really weak muscles that we have, our movement will improve, our posture will improve, and we're at less risk of injury. Now, again, like I said in the pelvis video, is that there is no 1,000% guarantee about injury prevention. Anyone that makes that promise is either lying to you or they're an idiot, okay? 
because there are a million factors that co that go into why someone has an injury. Okay, you know, their form could be impeccable. Everything is on, you know, angles are right. Everything is, you know, you could. It, it's it's like looking at a poster, a perfect form. They're doing it right, but it hurts like crazy. Let's say for squatting, they have perfect, perfect form on squat, but it just tears their knee up. Why is that? Okay, maybe they have arthritis in their knee, and any sort of movement kills it. Okay, no matter what we do on squat form, if you have arthritis, your knee's still gonna hurt. You know, or if uh, there's something genetic, okay, you know, I, you know, um, I, I can't, you know, if, you know, your dad, your dad's dad, and your dad's dad's dad, you know, all, you know, tore the ACLs for some reason. And maybe, for whatever reason, genetically, you are, you know, you have weak ACLs, or you have, something is going on in your body that causes that injury. So again, I can't promise you guys that, if you guys do these exercises, you guys are free and clear of all risk, okay? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not gonna try to trick you, get your hopes up, okay? However, what this will do is will reduce your risk to a decent amount. You'll be stronger because more act more muscles are active. Like I said, the body is a chain. So if we can strengthen bits and pieces of the chain, then we're gonna be a way lot stronger train, a chain, you know? So it may seem stupid to strengthen the front of your shin. Like, why does that ever matter? However, that may impact how you squat or deadlift, okay? And squatting or deadlifting works your quads, glutes, hamstrings, uh, lower back, core. So if you're not squatting or deadlifting right, you may impact those areas. So it's pretty important to have strong everything, all right? You know, and so, I, you know, again, you know, the, the goal for this video is to give you guys simple exercise. There are a millions of exercises for every muscle group. I want to keep it fairly simple. I have some exercises that require equipment. Uh, if you want, if you have it and you want to do it, others are body weight. Okay. Um, but again, these are exercises you can do very, very often because these muscles are super underworked. Okay. Think about it this way: if we're training our upper back and in the back, back of like this a lot. Okay, we're hunched over. If we're like this every single day because of work and life in our normal posture, do you think one day a week of a couple exercises is gonna pull us back? No, you need to be consistently doing it to counteract this. You know, counteract this. You need to be consistently strengthening your upper back and rear shoulders to do one of these, okay? So, you know, yes, I guess something is better than nothing, but you're not gonna get a lot out of this by doing it once a week, you know, whenever you feel like, whenever you're bored, okay? Prioritize your health, your safety, your human movement, all this kind of stuff, and do this four times a week, okay? I know that sounds like a lot, but this may, depending on, you know, how many exercises you do and how long, you know, this may take 10, 15 minutes. We spend that much time on TV, on a computer, on phone. It's super easy to just take 10, 15 minutes, bang these out real quick, and get on with your day, all right? So, I'm gonna go over a couple muscles that are super weak and then go over how to strengthen them, okay? So, I'm gonna go from top to bottom here to make it easy, okay? So, your first one is gonna be your lower trap in your upper back, okay? So now, you, you, your upper trap, your trapezius, is right here, okay? Kind of the hill that leads from your shoulder to your, up to your neck. However, the trap is kind of a weird shape, okay? Yeah, so it comes to your neck, it's up here in your neck, then it comes out to like your shoulder neck area. It does one of these, but also there's also part of your trap that comes down your spine up by your shoulder blades. Okay, that is your lower trap. The upper trap is very tight. Okay, here, up here, it is a very overactive muscle. For example, if you guys may be familiar with exercise, it's called a shrug. So as you guys do, you can take a dumbbell, barbell, whatever, and grab the weights and shrug up here. Okay, we we don't do the exercise. One is kind of a bodybuilding exercise to get big traps. And most of you guys do not want big, thick necks. Uh, that's more of an Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of thing. But also, it's already really tight, overactive muscle. We don't want to make the issue worse, all right? But the lower trap is very weak, okay? So kind of coming down your spine and your upper back by your shoulder blades, all right? And same, th same kind of deal, lower trap and rear deltoid. Okay, so the rear part of your shoulder. So your deltoid has kind of three main parts. 
You have your anterior delt, which is the front, which is very tight, very overactive. Medial deltoid, which is the middle, which is active, not too crazy, kind of normal. And then rear delt is weak because it's being pulled, it's being lengthened, it's being stretched very often because of poor posture and just like poor movement, okay? You know, obviously every exercise is a little bit different, but generally when you train your lower trap, you can also be training your rear delts, okay? So, I'm gonna go over a couple exercises that you guys can do, again, very often, every, you know, a couple days a week, every day if you want, for your lower trap and upper back, okay? So, you know, first one is with weights. So again, if you guys have weights, grab them, okay? It's called a bent over rear delt flop, okay? So what is that? This one you're gonna use light dumbbells for. So I have tens, you know, you're not gonna need 30 pound dumbbells to do this, okay? So, you're gonna kind of set up like a bent over row. So you're gonna come down here like this. Back is flat, we're not hunched over, we're squeezing our core, okay? From here, you're going to open your palms out, okay? You guys see that? So I don't have a neutral grip, and my palms aren't facing the wall behind me, my palms are facing you guys, the computer, okay? From here, I'm gonna have a slight bend in my elbow, so from the side, slight bend, and from here, I'm going to flare out, come back down, flare out, come back down. All right, I'll show you guys from the side. Again, show base on back, bend over, palms up, slight bend in the elbows, flare out, come back down, okay? As I come up, I'm squeezing my shoulders together, okay? Try to get them to touch. That is important, okay? So this slide works mostly rear depth, okay? With a little bit of lower chest, all right? Again, that one, this one's a little bit harder, um, and again, you need weight, so it's totally okay if you guys can't do it. So here are a couple other ones, all right? One we did in the warm-up today um, is our scapular push-up. Now, a lot of people struggle with this one because it's a little bit awkward, okay? So this is the one where you set up just like a normal push-up, but you do two things. You do not bend your elbows, and your lower back doesn't drop, okay? It's a very slight, move, small movement, so pay, pay attention to my like, upper back and shoulder area. Okay, so my, I set up just like a normal push-up, hands are underneath the shoulders, back is flat, all right? From here, I, it's almost like I'm trying to get my chest to touch the floor. So I push my chest forward, then I come up. Push my chest forward, come up, okay? You can go knee like as well. Think of it as a harder, more intense version of a cat-cow. So the cat-cow is where you guys come back and forth here. So it's a little bit different, but it is kind of the same idea, okay? So scapular push-ups. Again, elbows do not bend, lower back does not drop. It is all through your upper back and shoulder blade, okay? Third one, it's gonna look a little bit like a Superman, but there are a couple differences, okay? So, in a normal, I'll show you guys what Superman is, so don't do this, okay? In a Superman, when you guys come up, you lift your legs up and your thighs up and squeeze your lower back. That is not what we're trying to do, okay? You're going to keep your feet down on the floor. You're gonna open your palms up, thumbs to the ceiling, okay? So I'm here, I'm on my stomach, feet are down, palms up, or palms kind of facing you guys, thumbs to the ceiling. From here, I'm going to, before I even lift up my chest, I'm going to pinch my shoulders like I'm trying to get them to kiss. From here, I'm just gonna come up slightly, okay? Notice how, it, so again, this should not be in your lower back at all. So in a Superman, we really lift up. For the prone cobra raises, we only lift up a little bit. You guys should feel this in between your shoulder blades and in your mid back, okay? So again, feet stay on the floor. Don't come up so much that you feel this in your lower back. Only come up a couple inches until you feel a good squeeze, okay? Set, uh, last, last one for this body part is gonna be our band pull part. So if you guys have a band, you can get a pretty cheap. Uh, they might be kind of out of stock now because everyone has tried to buy one during this quarantine. We've done them at the gym before, about shoulder width, pull apart, all right? Me personally, I like to go to an underhand grip, okay? So I like to go underhand and pull apart, all right? Here's the thing. I like band pull parts. There's one guy, Danny knows him. He, he's, Danny is part of like a mastermind business group. 
And if I remember correctly, his name is Dwayne. And Dwayne owns a gym in, I think, Greenwich, Connecticut. And literally, after every single workout, he makes them do a hundred band pull parts. Every single workout, a hundred band pull parts, okay? Because the upper back is so, so weak, it needs that constant attention to be active and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my throat's dry. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, it needs that constant attention to pull back. Okay, so I know that sounds crazy. I'm not asking you guys to do 100. I would love to. You guys would probably kill me if I made you guys do 100 band pull parts every day. Um, but it's very, very important. Okay, so again, we have our scapular push up. So again, elbows do not uh, bend, back does not drop. Okay, we have our rear delt flies. So you guys bend over, palms up, thumbs to the ceiling, pinch, come back down. Okay, we have our prone cobra raises. So again, feet stay down. Hips stay down, you only come up a couple inches, pinch back, Can okay, we also have our band pull aparts, okay? Next one is gonna be for your mid back, okay? Besides the, okay, so mid back and upper back are really weak, low back is pretty tight, all right? So, sadly, there's not a lot of good body weight exercises for your mid back, okay? Yes, there's pull ups, but one, not a lot of people have pull up bars, and pull ups are hard, okay? You may not be able to do a lot of pull ups, you know? And so, yes, doing pull-ups will make you stronger, but if the goal is to really hit an underactive muscle, I can't expect you, you know, I, you know, I want to see 50 reps or more. Most, not, 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 I don't mean this in like a rude way, but most of you guys probably won't be able to get 50 reps, okay? Push-ups, I, I don't know if I could do 50 reps in a day. Maybe if I started really early and went really late, like if I took a lot of breaks. But, you know, 50 pull-ups in a day is a lot. So, Really, the only exercise that I recommend for this one is a bent over row, or really any row. I love, I love, I love rows, all right? So for me, the easiest one, if you have, if you have dumbbells, grab them, just set up just like the fly, so the shoulder blade's done and back, squeeze your core. If you want to have a slight bend in your knees, you can, bend over, okay? That's why it's called a bent over row. This is not bent over enough. This is, okay? From here, when you row, do not pull straight up. You're going to pull back to your hips. Here, pull back, squeeze, pinch, come back down. Pull back, squeeze, and pinch, come back down. All right? If you, got, if you guys have like bands, let me grab this band here. If you guys have bands, let me hook it up to this. I think this is in camera view. Yep. If you guys have bands, you guys can do, oops, that's not very anchor. I thought it was heavier. So you can row back and forth there. If by chance you guys have a cable machine at your house, you guys can row. Really, any row under the sun will work. Yes, there's slight variations, grips, angles, all that garbage, but a row is a row, okay? So I know that's a little bit more of a main exercise. We do rows every week. I believe this week it is Sunday or Saturday, maybe Thursday. It's later in the week. Uh, for our strength day, but I love rows, so really, really bang them out, okay? Because here's the thing, I, I kind of mentioned with the glutes, the more you stretch something, the weaker it gets, okay? So, if I'm hunched over, let me back up a little bit so you guys can see my back. If I'm like this, or, oops, I'm like this every day, typing on my computer, texting on my phone, even if I don't feel a stretch, I am very passively stretching my back my mid back and my uh, upper back, okay? So it is weak. It is your, it's called your posterior chain, so the back side. A lot of, you know, so our, in our posterior chain, our traps, our, our lower traps, our rear delts, our mid back, our butt and hamstrings are all really weak parts of our, end, our, of our posterior chain due to our posture, okay? So we have to train that posterior chain to straighten out a little bit, okay? Um, so again, any row will do. Lawn mowers, we do those. I think we did lawn mowers on Monday, uh, this past Monday. So any row works for me, okay? Next one is core, all right? So I know we hit core a decent amount at raw, whether it's the core and cardio days or the finishers or just kind of splashed in, you know, throughout the week, we could all benefit from some more core. So like I said, every muscle has the opposing muscle. The back and the core are, or I guess you can consider your lower back part of your core, so I'll say abs to make it a little more easy. 
So abs are one muscle, back is another muscle, they oppose each other, okay? The back is super tight, okay? So if the back is super tight, what is the core doing? I'll give you guys a couple seconds to guess. The back is tight, what does the core do? If you said the core is being stretched, lengthened, and weakened, you get a gold star, you are right. The core is very weak, okay? So like I said in the pelvis video, lower back is tight, hikes the hips up, pushes the front of the hips down, abs are stretched, okay? Also, a little bit more harder and confusing of a topic is what the rib cage does, okay? Uh, a lot of people, if you, uh, one guy, that I, one fitness guy I follow, he calls them rib boobs, okay? So find kind of where your ribs stick out. A lot of people have their rib boobs stick out, okay? Right here is not my chest, but yet that's the part that sticks out the most. All right, people need to learn to tuck their ribs, okay? So if my ribs are up, flared up, again, this lengthening and pulling my core and weakening it. So I have two points that are weakening my core. I have my hips, I have my hips via my lower back lengthening weak my core, and I have my ribs coming up lengthening my core. So it is super duper important to strengthen your core because it is so, so weak, okay? So a couple ones. Again, my favorite, this was in the pelvis video, is the quadruped plank. I know some of you guys may not like it as much as I do, but I think it is an incredible exercise it is simple, low impact, no equipment, okay? So, hands are underneath the shoulders, pinch your shoulders down and back, flatten your back. You guys see that difference? I started here, I'm hunched over. Now I'm here, flatten that back out, knees are underneath the hips, then your knees come off the floor about an inch and hold it. Look at my head, it is straight. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. I'm straight. Okay, so that one is one of my favorite ones. Throughout not only this one, but any core exercise, you guys must be squeezing your core. Actively squeeze it, okay? Really squeeze like you're about to get punched, suck your belly button in, do what you gotta do, but make sure your core is firing, all right? Second one, another simple one, and we do a lot, is our dead bug. Now here's the thing. Some people treat the dead bog as kind of like a blow-off exercise, okay? Because a lot of that, okay? It seems easy. If you do it right, you'll get a lot out of it, okay? But as simple as the dead bug is, a lot of people mess it up. With a couple areas they mess up, so that's what I'm going to touch on, okay? So, for the dead bug, most important, I don't know if most important, but very importantly, your lower back has to stay in the floor. All right, I talked about this in the pelvis video, but what you guys need to do is take the front of your hips and roll them to your head, okay? Then take your hands, stick them in your lower back. If you can reach your hands under your lower back, your back is in the floor. Roll those hips all the way to your lower back is in the floor, okay? Keep your back that way, all right? From here, whatever knee is bent, that arm goes back. So I'll show you guys from this side because everything looks the same. So I'm here, right? My, my left knee is straight, my right knee is bent, so my right arm comes back, okay? And, then, and so, I mean, sometimes we get back, I see people get mixed up. So again, whatever knee is bent, the arm goes up. I kind of think of it like going up for a layup in basketball, right? When you lay up, you do the same side, okay? So if you guys ever play basketball, just keep that in mind. Go for a layup, going for a dunk, all the same side. Third, all right, is your core has to work to keep your lower back in the floor, okay? That's, that's part of the exercise. That's why it works your core, okay? So, but here's the thing. When your knee comes past your hip, like you're hugging yourself, your pelvis will automatically tilt and your lower back will go in the floor, not because of your core, but just because that is how your body moves, okay? So when you guys do dead bugs and you come all the way to your chest and back all the way to your chest, your core is not working, okay? What you need to do is end right at your hip, okay? So right now my leg is a 90 degree angle. That is as close as it should get to my chest. Now I switch, again, knee at a 90 degree angle, lower back in the floor, left knee is not at my chest, 
okay? And then lastly, go slow, okay? Dead bug is not one to flop through, okay? You flop through it, you'll get nothing. Go slow, okay? Now is the time to kind of get in tune with your body. Squeeze your core. Keep that pelvis, you know, tucked. Push that lower back in the floor. Feel your knee ending right at your hip. You know, kind of dig deep, figure yourself out. Again, go, go slow. I cannot stress that enough, all right? If that's, I'll, I'll talk about time and sets and reps and stuff at the end of this video, but let's say we're doing it for 30 seconds. I'd be a thousand times happier within that 30 seconds. You only got four reps, but they were slow, perfect reps instead of 400 quick garbage reps. Okay, so go, go slow. All right, our next one. This one is a little bit harder, but I'll explain why it is important, okay? So, the core does many, many things, okay? So, the core helps me rotate, but it also helps me not rotate, okay? So think of the exercise we do. It's called the pal-off hold. When we have the band attached to the weight rack, I have you guys grab the band, pull it to your chest, and hold it, okay? That's anti-rotation, right? It's like Russian twists are rotation, and pal-off holds are anti-rotation, okay? Then you have lateral flexion. So lateral flexion, obviously lateral side to side, flexion is like a side bend, okay? An anti-lateral flexion, so to uh, resist flexing would be like a side plank, okay? So there's, the, there's many, many functions, and there's flexion and extension here, all right? So flexion would be like a via, okay? And then extension would be like a superman coming up, all right? So there are a million different, like, moves the core does, okay? So I know we already did the quadruped plank, but now we're going to do a single arm plank, and here's why, okay? So what the quadruped plank is, is it's kind of like an anti-flexion and anti-extension at the same time. You're, you're, you know, you're resisting sagging, resisting coming up, you're just trying to stay flat, okay? When you do the single arm plank, it's anti-rotation. Now here's why, okay? So when you guys do a single arm plank, so you put one forearm on the floor and you hold it, okay? What happens? So right now my right arm is on the floor. If you have bad anti-rotation strength, your right hip will drop and your left hip opens, okay? So that's why I tell you guys, keep your hips down, keep your hips to the floor. When you do the single arm plank, hug yourself instead of reaching your arm behind you, okay? Because if I reach my arm behind me, I'm going to flare out. And again, now I'm being the purpose of the exercise. If I hug myself and really keep my hips square, now I'm working those anti-rotation core muscles, okay? So yeah, I know that one's harder. If you need to go kneeling, you can go kneeling. That is fine. But it is, I know we already did a quadruped plank, but the single arm plank serves as a different function, okay? So even though they're both planks, don't worry about it, okay? And then our last one is going to be the anti-lateral flexion, and that's going to be our side plank, okay, for our obliques. So you're gonna, we probably all know what a side plank is. I'll still show it. All right? Hand underneath the shoulder, uh, like elbow underneath the shoulder, shoulder up, hips up, squeeze your butt, squeeze your core. Okay? What mistake do people make? There's two of them. All right? First one is the hip sag. All right? I, it's kind of dark. Right now my hips are sagging, and that's even starting to bother my lower back. All right? So make sure you guys keep your hips up. Second one, I'll, I'm I'll show you guys with my head facing you guys. Look at my top shoulder. I'll, I'll take my hat off so it doesn't get in the way. All right, top shoulder, see how it's leaning forward? We don't want that. We want both shoulders stacked right on top of each other, okay? Hit both sides, of course. So that is kind of our upper body and torso, all right? So again, what strengthening those muscles will do, they will help pull the shoulder blades down and back, okay? They'll help pull the rib cage down, it will help lift from, if, if, my, if my pointer fingers are the front of my hips and like the pelvis and my thumbs are the back part, if I'm tilted forward, it will help lift it up a little bit, okay? So it's the upper part, all right? Now, 
let's talk about legs, okay? Lower part, all right? So, like I said earlier, quads, so the front of your thigh, and your TFL, the, hip, the front of your hip flexor, okay, are tight, very tight. Those opposing muscles, your glutes, so your butt, your hamstrings, and your abductors are weak. Now, most of us know what glutes and hamstrings are. Your abductors are right here, all right? Side of your hips into your butt a little bit, okay? So if you guys ever been to a commercial gym, okay, and you've seen people on the machine when they sit, there's pads right here on the outside of their knee, and they open up and close. Open and close, they're training their abductors, all right? So those muscles are very, very weak, okay? And that's what leads to caving in, okay? Not only our knees caving in, but our arches collapsing, okay? So, which is also very bad, but also what it leads to is, like I talked about earlier with the hips, okay? If my glutes, and my hamstrings, and my abductors are weak, I have that pelvic tilt again, okay? If you want to know more about the pelvic tilt, go back to the video I made a couple days ago. It was about a half hour long. I beat the hips to death, and I told you how to fix your garbage, all right? So, we're going to go over strengthening your glutes, your abductors, and your hamstrings, all right? So, the simplest one is any bridge you want, okay? Alternate them, so you don't get bored and just switch it up a little bit, but any bridge you want. If you have a band, like a small band to put on your knees, or a weight to put on your hips, that's even better, okay? So, a couple bridges you can do. You can do the bridge, where you just come up with both feet. All right, here's the thing. I'll show you guys, I don't know if you guys are gonna see. Keep your toes flexed towards the ceiling. I'll explain why that's important later, okay? But don't have your feet flat on the floor. Flex those toes up so only your heels are touching, all right? So you can do both feet, okay? You can do single leg, all right? Or you can do the hair bridge. Feet together, knees apart. For this one, you don't have to flex your toes. Put your feet together, okay? So any bridge, whatever floats your boat, okay? Next one is our side line hip abductions. If I remember correctly, Danny made a very similar exercise, your challenge for the week, I think last week, we're going to do like 350 each leg, okay? So what you guys are going to do, it's called a side line, so I see Lana said, an abduction. You're going to take this top leg, come up, come back down, okay? If you guys have a band, or if you want to take a weight and place it on your leg and come up, that is even better, but here is what is important, guys. You, you can't see it from this angle, so I'll show you from here. All right? Like I said, hip flexor is tight, butt is weak. So I do not want to bring my foot forward and further tighten my hip and further weaken my butt, okay? I want to come back to stress my hip and squeeze my butt a little bit more and then come up, okay? So your, your top leg should be behind your bottom leg about six inches to a foot, all right? You can go up and down or just a hold, okay? You can do both, alternate it, whatever makes you happy. Again, there's not an exact science to this stuff, okay? Next one, uh, you can do it with or without a weight. To me, this one is really good with a weight, okay? Uh, you know, if you don't have a weight, try it out. Um, I really like this one with a weight, okay? It's called a donkey kick. This is for your glutes. So, take your dumbbell, put it in the pit of your knee, okay? Feels a little bit weird because we don't know any put weights back there, all right? Flatten that back, and then you're going to flex your toe up, like, 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 like I don't know, you guys can't really see, but I'm pointing my toe into the ground, all right? And then driving my heel up towards the ceiling, come back down. Squeeze your butt as you come up, okay? Go nice and slow. Again, you can do the same thing without weights. But again, really emphasize, squeeze that butt. What you guys can even do, get to the top, hold it for a couple seconds. Squeeze one, two, three, back down, okay? And then do both legs. Our last one on the uh, uh, legs is gonna be for our hamstring, okay? And that's gonna be our stiff-legged bridge. Now, I love hamstring curls. When we do those sliders, when you're on your back, I, they're one of my favorite exercises. However, they suck uh, in terms of they're hard, and you, you, you guys are usually pretty sore after that. So that's why 
I'm not recommending this one to do every single day just because it's kind of tough and leaves you pretty sore. But this one you guys can do all the time because it's pretty low impact and odds are you're not sore. And that is stiff legged bridge. So you get a normal bridge, you guys are up here, all right? For this bridge, straighten your legs out, bang, uh, flex your toes up, again, I'll explain that in a second. Drive your heels in, squeeze your butt, squeeze your hamstrings, come back down. Again, this one, you can come uh, up and down or hold, okay? Now, here is our last one. It is going to sound a little goofy when I say it, all right? So, there is a small muscle in the front of your shin, okay? That's called your anterior tibialis. Very small, it runs on the outside. So you guys really can't see it on me because it's not very defined, it's kind of dark, but if you, you, know, you know, flex your toe up and touch your cat's shin, you should feel it, okay? Very weak, all right? On the, on the opposing muscle end, let me back up. On the opposing muscle end, calves and Achilles are really tight. Remember I talked about opposing muscles, okay? If one's lengthened and weak, other one's tight and overactive, all right? So, why is having a stronger tibial, anterior tibialis, important, okay? Well, if you guys have ever had shin splints, that is the muscle that is freaking out, okay? If you strengthen that tibia, anterior tibialis, you will work on not having as much shin splints, all right? That's one. Also, this may help with plantar fasciitis because you're just overall strengthening around the foot and ankle, okay? Everything is connected, all right? Like I said, it's a chain. If you have dysfunction in one area, odds are you have dysfunction in the other area. So strengthen that tibialis, okay? Why is your calves and Achilles so tight and your tibialis so weak? And here's why. Let me back up and sit for you again, okay? So, think about when you sit at a desk, okay? Whether you're at home, I mean, you're at, you're at your work, or you're sitting on your, you know, your couch watching TV, most of us stick our legs out, all right? It's a little dark. You guys notice my toes are pointed forward. Just because, hey, that's, that's lazy, that's relaxed, all right? Very passively, I'm squeezing that calf and Achilles and stretching that anterior tibialis. And again, the, the, those, that, long, that prolonged stretch weakens it, okay? Or think about when you are going to bed. No matter what, if you lay on your stomach, your feet are pointed straight. If you lay, uh, I mean, if you lay on your back, your feet are pointed straight. And if you lay on your stomach, of course your uh, feet are pointed straight. You're not sleeping with your toes up. That's a little weird, okay? So your tibia, and also, especially for my ladies out there who love their high heels, their wedges, their stylish boots, okay, let, let me... Come back up here again, all right? If I'm in that nice stiletto because it's date night, my foot's pointed this way. And what is that doing? That is tightening the calf and Achilles and weakening the tibialis, okay? So I know, you know, hey, you wanna look, you know, you wanna look all fancy because you, you love your shoes to make you look a little bit taller. I, I get it, but those shoes are garbage, okay? Stop wearing them. But that is why your tibialis is so weak, okay? So, how to strengthen that tibialis? So, I, I had you guys do it one day at Raw, and it was kind of a mess. It was too hard for me to do on all of you guys, so we haven't done it since. But when I had you guys put your feet in the kettlebells and go up and down. But that was too complicated, all right? Because it was really hard to get on and off, and so here's an easier way, okay? Very simple. All you got, you got, you got to sit down for this one. So, I'm asking a lot out of you guys, all right? Sit down. Stick your legs out and flex your toes. So again, I'll show you guys from the side. Stick your feet out, flex your toes. You, you can put your heels down, I'm just showing you because the white on the wall shows up better. Flex your toes towards you. Squeeze your tibialis, okay? Squeeze the crap out of it, all right? Why is that important? Like I said, it helps counteract that tightness in the calf and Achilles, but here's the thing. A lot of us have bad ankle mobility. Okay, so a lot of us have a hard time, okay, if this is the bottom of my foot, this is my shin, this is my calf, a lot of people have a hard time doing this, okay. They can do this all day, they can point their foot down, but they can't come up this high, okay. So what does that look like in the workout world? 
okay? So, when people squat, if they have a hard time keeping their chest up, or have a hard time keeping their feet firmly planted on the floor without squatting like this, they have bad ankle mobility, okay? And so, if, like I said, I said it to, during today's workout, if you're squatting like this, you're gonna hurt your knees, all right? If you're squatting like this, you're gonna work on your lower back, which is not the goal, all right? So it's very important that we're doing those exercises right, but also, you know, I know feet really aren't like a sexy thing in the fitness world, but think about it this way. If your feet and ankles are, like there's dysfunction in them, okay? Certain muscles are too weak, certain muscles are too strong, and they're not working right. If the foundation is garbage, how do you expect the rest of the body to work, all right? So for example, if my, you know, if my arches are collapsing, well, my knees are gonna cave in, okay? And maybe I hunch forward a little bit to my squat, and now my squat's garbage. Right? So I, I know, again, I know the feet may not sound fun, it may not sound fun to train your shins, but again, if everything's top down, I, uh, bottom up, okay? So if, if I'm not working here, I'm definitely not working here, definitely not working here, not working all the way up either. So strengthen that tibialis, even out that imbalance in your foot ankle area, and be able to walk and function, squat and deadlift and lunge and move better, okay? So, I know that was a long video, but I hope you guys learned something. In terms of time and reps, okay, just to make it simple, all right, because we could play around with rep schemes and all this garbage for hours, okay, to make it simple, do each exercise for a minute each, all right, do three rounds a day, all right, so how many exercises did I recommend? I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay? So, maybe you do 14, you know, 14 minutes of one exercise, I think more, because I think the side plank. So, in the side, so 16 minutes in the morning, 16 minutes at night, all right? I think that's doable. If you want to do more, knock yourself out, okay? You know, do a minute each exercise. So very simple, you know, doesn't get more, you know, I don't want to complicate, okay? So, again, bunch of exercises, but, but again, I think this will really help you guys, all right? If you guys, I, I, you know, I, I, we're pretty much finishing up here. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this and, and taking your time and, you know, taking care of your body and listening to what I have to tell you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions about what I told you or anything related to this, comment. I'm more than happy to help, all right? Um, but try these out. Yeah, we got all the time in the world now during this quarantine, so now is the time to really work on your self-care, get stronger, get healthier, get safer, all right? Do what you got to do, but again, you know, it's important that we do these things to make sure we're not getting hurt, to make sure our, we're in a good postural position, make sure we are moving correctly, okay, that our chain is working, um, but yeah, so again, I really hope you guys try this out, even just do a couple, maybe do half one day, the other half, the other day, okay? Again, there's not an exact science. Freestyle a little bit. Do what you like, but try these out, all right? I'll see you guys next time. And again, comment below if you guys have any questions. I'm more than happy to help. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, Pam, let me, let me write those down right now. I'll comment them for you, and I'll tag you in it so you cannot miss it, all right? So everyone else, you guys can check the comment below. So we'll do bent over rear delt flies, we have our scapular push-ups, our prone, co again, if you guys have any questions about the form, let me know, I can, um, I can either find a good YouTube video and send it to you guys, or if I don't find one or don't like them, it won't take me very long to record it myself, um, whoops, I gotta do a comma. It won't take very long to do it myself, and so I'm, I'm more than happy to help with that. So let me, whoops, dead bug, single arm plank, side plank, whoops, a bridge of any variation, side, whoops, side line, hip abduction, um, donkey gigs. 
dip, jagged bridge, and I'm not, I'll, I'll just call them flexing your toes up, okay? Make it simple. All right, so uh, again, Pam, let me just comment that right now. Oops, I just saw, oh, let me, uh, I'll apply in it. Let me, I just saw your comment now, uh, Sue. So let me tag you in the comment. All right, uh, somebody go, go, go else commented, if this works. Okay, it's not letting me go back. So hold on, let's see if I can tell. All right, it's not letting me go back. So if you guys, uh, you guys can always, you know, return back to this post, screenshot, do what you guys gotta do. Um, Again, I can't see you guys comments anymore, so if you're commenting more stuff, I'm not replying. I'm sorry, I can't see it. Um, but, again, try this out. Hopefully this helps. Again, if you guys have any, if you guys forgot how the exercise goes, something like that, comment, you know, tag me in it, whatever you got to do, and I will, you know, make a video or find a video for you guys that, you know, shows you guys the form. So that is it, guys. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. You know, do these. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay active. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.